Yo guys, what's up? It's Ryan from Tower Reviews, and I'm back with yet again another speed test on iPod Touches. I've got the 4th gen on the right here, and the 5th gen on the left. So we're going to start out by taking a look at the external hardware differences, and then talk a little bit about the internal hardware differences, and then we'll go into the software and do a couple speed tests, and look at some other things that have changed. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the outside of each device. We've got the 4th gen on the right again and the 5th gen on the left. I got the white and yellow one. On the back of the 4th gen and all previous iPod touches you have the stainless steel that scratches instantly and smudges all the time as you can see there. Had it in a case pretty much its whole life and it still looks like crap. You've got the 0.7 megapixel camera there with just the microphone to the right. And you got the 5 megapixel eyesight with microphone and LED flash. And then you also have the Wi-Fi antenna on the right there, which is not visible here on the 4th gen. You also have the loop button now down here on the 5th gen, which simply pops out. And then you can attach a lanyard to it, which is a welcome feature, but definitely not necessary. Especially since it's probably going to cause a lot of problems with case manufacturers. And then you also have no more gigabyte marking there, which you do on the 4th gen. So both are 32 gigabytes. Both both cost $300, or at the time when I bought the fourth gen, it cost $300, which was two years ago now. It's rocking the A4 chip with 256 megabytes of RAM. The iPod Touch fifth generation has 512 megabytes of RAM and the A5 chip. So it's definitely significantly faster. I've definitely noticed that, especially after using this for so long and running new operating systems. It still is pretty fast, but I've noticed some lag just in the operating system and in some apps. Uh, both have about the same amount of uh, storage taken up, around 10 gigabytes. So I got apps and music and stuff on each. And then we also got the front facing cameras here on the front. You've got the 1.2 megapixel HD uh, FaceTime camera on the iPod Touch. And then you got like a 0.2 or 0.3 megapixel um, VGA front facing camera here on the fourth generation. Both have retina displays, 326 pixels per inch, but obviously you have a 4 inch display on the iPod Touch 5th generation and a 3.5 here on the 4th gen, which means you have 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Great for video watching, not so great for unoptimized apps, which have letterboxings up at the top and the bottom, but that should not be a problem in the days to come. We've also got the new lightning connector down here on the bottom of the iPod Touch 5th generation and the 5 hole speaker grill which obviously you have the 30 pin and that speaker grill there. The speaker sound quality has improved vastly here on the iPod Touch 5th generation. Obviously it's not going to come over very well on video but take my word for it. It's definitely a lot better and the screen has also improved a lot too. It's almost equal to the iPhone 5 in color reproduction and pretty much everything else. Viewing angles are great as you can see there. You can almost still see it perfectly. So yeah, they really didn't skimp out very much on the display quality, whereas on the iPod Touch 4th generation, it's still a great display. Uh, it sort of looks washed out now after looking at uh, these new 4-inch displays for a while. So now we're going to jump right into the software of the iPods and see which one runs iOS 6 faster, which one boots up faster. All that good stuff. Okay, so we're going to start out the test by powering them down. Okay, so it looks like the fifth gen was down significantly faster. Let's go back up. Alright, so the 4th gen got us a little bit of a head start there. So even with the couple second head start the 4th gen had, the 5th gen still was significantly faster.
All right, so the fourth gen is finally up. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dimensions of the iPod Touch. Fourth generation and fifth generation. Obviously, there's going to be a difference in height because of the four inch display. But width here is pretty much the same and thickness. It almost looks as though the fourth gen is a little bit thinner just because of the chamfered edges and how they kind of are more gradual than on the fourth or the fifth gen here. But they both feel very nice in the hand. The fifth gen feels almost like there's nothing there. It feels a lot thinner than the fourth gen for some reason, even though they're both pretty close. It's actually hard to tell which one is thicker. But another thing to note is that here on the iPod Touch fifth generation, the camera is raised up pretty significantly, so you can definitely feel it when you put it down. Um, you can feel it uh, take the brunt of the hit, but it's really not that big of a deal. It could be in the future. I've only had it for a couple days now, so I don't know if it's going to get scratched or what. Alright, so now let's go into Safari and do some speed tests, but first we got to clear out all the multitasking and everything. And another thing to note is that the 5th gen doesn't actually have auto brightness, as you can see there. I think it's because it's so thin it can't have a proximity or a ambient light sensor. So that's a thing to consider when deciding on your purchase. So now that everything's cleared out, let's go ahead and boot Safari. Okay, let's go to my YouTube channel. Let's go ahead and load the first video. Okay, so just as expected, the fifth gen loaded it up a little bit quicker. Okay, so as you can see here, you have no black barring here for widescreen on the 5th gen, but you do down here on the 4th gen. Alright, so it looks like the 5th gen has the majority of the content loaded already and it's done. Alright, let's try scrolling around and zooming in and out. So as you can see there, it's a little bit unresponsive on the 4th gen. still works, you just have to be patient with it, but it's not as good as over here on the 5th gen, as you can see there. Just smooth, always responsive, always works. Alright, so again, the 5th gen one there. Let's go into maps. Alright, so both were pretty quick, although the fourth gen was on satellite, so that was a little bit unfair. So they were pretty equal actually there with loading that up. So just looks a lot better though on the fifth gen. And pretty pretty smooth scrolling around. Uh, there's a lot more checker boxing, as you can see there, on the fourth generation. And that's a good indicator of the quality, how much truer the colors are. That really is showing up pretty well on camera. Watch the grass roll out. So it's done on the fifth gen. done on the fourth gen. So not a huge difference there, but still significant. And also if you took note of the battery life of the fourth gen at the beginning of this video, you would have noticed that it was completely fully charged and now look at it. So it's definitely taken a hit over the two years that I've been using it. it does not hold a charge very well. Whereas the uh, fifth gen still holding it pretty well. It wasn't completely fully charged when I started the video. Alright guys, so that about sums up this video comparing the iPod Touch fourth generation to the iPod Touch fifth generation. 
I hope it serves some serve the purpose of helping people out there decide between the fourth generation, which is definitely showing its age, but still uh, one of the best iPod touches, obviously, um, and maybe convince some people to go for the fifth gen, which is definitely packing a lot of new features worth looking into. And also now with the iPad Mini release today, you might want to consider that for only thirty dollars more. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.